to street preaching on Saturday. That'd be a blessing. It's just getting darker a little earlier now, I think, so we'll push it back an hour. And, uh, pray about that as we lead towards uh, that day. Obviously, we want the Lord involved in whatever it is we do. Amen. We want to have protection. Amen. So, and most importantly, though, that we make a difference. Right? So you'll you'll see people now. This would have been probably will be rather our third uh, out. And so you just never know. Our, our responsibility, amen, is to put the word out. Uh, not so much uh, not so much with the results and being overly uh, conscious of, of who's, who's out there or whatever. But, uh, and you, you'll get a blessing now. All right, uh, preach a message on uh, do what you got to do. All right, so uh, turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy 4. And uh, Brother Kyle, if you'd be so kind, my brother, is to open us up in the word of career. Dear Lord, we thank you for bringing us here, Lord. We ask for guidance and understanding of your Jesus to your word. We ask for that you work on our hearts, make us right, keep us faithful, encourage Guide us, Lord, so that when we leave these doors, we go out and serve you, preach the gospel. Look for a man of time, Lord. We pray you come soon. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, so uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 21, Paul talks and says, Do thy diligence to come before winter. Amen. Which, which would tell you as you start reading this Bible and kind of getting a grasp of responsibility, uh, Responsibilities as a Christian, um, whatever you're gonna do, whatever you have planned, whatever I guess you've been praying about, do it. Because it's, uh, and I'm not sure what you're seeing out there. Uh, I'm not overly concerned to say about you know these COVID thing, and I get it kind of, and uh, I, I think that that this whole thing basically is set up for what's coming. And you you know as a Christian. As a Bible believer, because you've been in the Bible just a tad bit, right, hopefully, yeah. you recognize that, man, these things are about to change, brother. It's about to come down. It's about to do its thing. Uh, go to Second uh, Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, Second Thessalonians chapter 2. And so with that being said, whatever you're going to do, like Paul says here, man, it, there's, a, there's an emphasis there to get done with, with what needs to be done. And he uses the word your diligence, right? Do thy diligence to come before winter. Why? Well, once winter comes, amen, whatever it is you were supposed to do, that day is over now. So so the time that you had trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, from the time you get called up out of here one way or another, some of you won't see that. That's cool. I'm down with that one. Amen? Uh, I don't, you know, I don't want to go out in the blaze of glory. I think sometimes you hear the pastors preaching like, man, you so you want to get me down on the corner right now. However, the Lord tarries, there's a good possibility. Obviously, man, you're just going to give up the ghost one day, and uh, it'll be just that. But whenever that day comes, you're good. You're, you're seated already. You're seated with him already in heavenly places. Amen. I mean, you got eternal life. Um, but in the meantime, be focused on the fact that because you're here, that'll give you the indication that there's something still needs to be done. At least you're a part of something because here you are, right? And for the most part, you're here in church, and you know, you're trying to kind of tune in and, and, and hear a little bit of feedback of what, what, what responsibility you might have. Or maybe it's the message that you get a little something out of. And then and God will continue to guide and direct you to his perfect will. You should want that as a Christian. Amen. But whatever you're going to do, I don't, I don't, I don't, whatever it is, do it. If you've got to recommit your life or get in the fight or, or, or just take that extra step as a Christian... Man, I'm not sure what you're waiting for. I'm not sure if you're waiting for some kind of special, because the wicked and adulterous generation seek that for a sign. So it's like you're waiting for the next broadcast or waiting, I guess, after the election to get serious with God and see if Biden gets in or not. It's regardless, man. Who cares who's in, brother? You have a responsibility being a member of this church. Amen. You have a responsibility more importantly than a member of this church because you're saved, blood bought. And Jesus Christ looked down out of heaven when you had called out, he didn't he said, okay, come on in. And now you get on the boat, and he said, I'll meet you on the other side. Amen? And there'll be storms and trials and tribulations and things you understand, things you don't really understand. And then there's this place, God, it's life, L-I-F-E, 
There are going to be some things thrown your way. You have no idea. And you're just going to have to wait till you get to heaven to figure out why all that went down like that. But but you're here. Tonight you're here, right? And glory to God for it. You got your Bible, right? So you can know exactly what God wants in your life. You just got to keep working on that old heart of yours. Because that old heart of yours has got nothing but mischief. Amen? It's got none but excuses. It's got nothing but, uh, you know, we can always do that tomorrow. That ain't Bible. The Bible is once you find out, do it. Pull the trigger, man. Go. Be the fool. Go, man. Because you're going to be a fool one way or another. Yep. I'd much rather if it's going to be me looking silly and foolish, and I would much rather it being from these backslid creatures or these unsaved people, whatever, as a result of trusting Christ and doing what he had me to do yeah. instead of looking like a fool in front of him yep. and looking like a fool in front of his people. I don't want to do that. I mean, I already got it, man. I, 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 I get it. I, I know how life kind of works. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, look at verse 1. And we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the gathering together unto him that you be not soon shaken in your mind, amen, or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. I mean, I, you, you guys got to understand, so I'll continue to preach this way. I, I, I like my preaching, man. I like I mean, not me, my preaching. I, I like my preaching, though. The preaching that I subject myself to. I like it hot, man. I want somebody to go, man. I go, go, go. I amen. want it to get me amen. right here, right here. Smack me around a little bit, amen. Give me a little what for. And I like feeling a little mean, amen, when it comes to the Word of God. I like feeling a little ornery, man. I always kind of like, I, I like even being on the edge to, to, to kind of feeling, should I give you a track and just shoot you, you know? And, and hopefully the Holy Spirit of God brings me back to reality and I hand you the track because I can't shoot you, man. I don't, don't want to do that. But there's this all this ridiculous, this is trash, and, and Paul's saying, man, that diligence that you have, that, that responsibility, that extra step, and man, instead of, well, you know, we get to it, Pastor, we'll just go through the motion, and it's a Wednesday night, and hey, I've got some donuts over there, and yeah, you know, okay, well, I don't know about that street preaching stuff, I don't, okay, winter's coming. The day of Jesus Christ is at hand. All throughout that Bible, you have a beginning. In the beginning, God created. And you have an end, brother. Uh, Jesus Christ said, I'm the beginning and the end. So you can't go wrong trusting Christ. Amen. You can't go wrong just staying in the will of God. And, and let it fall, man. Relax. Amen. Put just go. Just go out there and, 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 and tell people. Play the fool. Grab some tracks. Amen. Show up on Saturday. Let's go out there and, and, and you know, you won't have to do it. It's not like I didn't say jump out and go into the traffic. Amen. We ain't black lives matter. We ain't Tifa. Amen. I didn't say bring a bike or whatever and flip through the whatever. Don't do that. Bring a sword, though. Amen. Uh -huh. Yeah. Alright. Holy Spirit God, you got him already. Yeah. Amen. Pray that he ain't greedy, though. Because if you want to look silly, you're not going to like that. Amen. Because mm -hmm. God forbid that if something does come up, then you're going to let it be that hang. Verse 3 says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come, sadly. Amen. And you're in the midst of this. Except there come a falling away first. And if the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Amen. The spirit out there is everything against Jesus Christ. And sad, it, it doesn't take much. You would think, well, you know, because you got this silly thing out there. You got this deal out here. Is there, look at uh, 2 Corinthians. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 15. You got this weird deal with Christians today, man. They all come, they just make this stuff up. You know, and I talk to Christians. Uh, you? Uh, and I said 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. If I said 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. They got this weird deal, man. And you know what? I'm not the Lord over the flock as your pastor. I'll encourage you. If you don't want to come, you'll, 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 you'll find an excuse anyway. Or you'll come because I called you. You come for Jesus Christ. You come to learn the book, and you come because you want to be part of the solution. Now, if you go that route, you'll find that, man, church is actually pretty cool. If you come from other reasons, because you're here to see Jack or Susie or Bobby or whatever, and you found that there were donuts coming, amen, and you, uh, you just can't eat donuts, but, you know, that only lasts so long. But Jesus Christ is eternal, so if you just kind of hook up into that, that book's eternal, so if you hook up into that, and the ministry right now is where it's going, and I think we have a very good ministry, so we keep going. You have that attitude towards the Word of God, and Christian Christianity is not like soccer, where that's just something I do. You know, I play soccer. I don't do it. I don't, I don't miss a lot of money, man, and I love sport either, so I try that. My wife likes that. I like that. Uh, you know, it's like I do racquetball. I go to the gym. You get people to get saved. And after that, it's about 
uh, okay, now what? And, and the thing about that, again, going back to these, the way preachers are preaching nowadays and how they're laying it out, you know, it's like, well, well, if you're saved, if you're saved and you really have the Holy Spirit of God in you, you would never do X, Y, Z. There ain't no way that the Holy Spirit of God will be allowed, allow you to do whatever. And then I'll tell you, you're not quite understanding this Bible. Well, that couldn't have been this, this bird right here and the way he's now, he's smoking again and he left church and he did whatever. They were never, that couldn't have been saved. might be right. There, there, there could be that. It, it might be that the guy was never saved. Because that's why I'm looking, looking for so I know. But there's a balance to that. That's they'll, 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 they'll say that every guy that makes a profession of faith that does wrong is was never saved to begin with. Well, again, you don't know Demas. You don't know Peter. You don't know a lot of these different people, man. Going back in the Old Testament, you got all sorts of deals, man. David doing his thing. Samson doing his thing. You know, all sorts of crazy stuff that goes on. Amen. Moses never got into the promised land, by the way. Right. Paul said in me that is in my flesh well no good thing so so be careful just read I'll tell you this read the Bible yeah. and get the right perspective yes, and sir. just keep moving forward now show up and listen and then practice what you preach or whatever or practice what's preached or whatever and you'll find man your Christianity will turn into instead of ah it'll be like ah, ah. yeah and you get to know someone's doing something because you got to know alright look at verse uh, chapter 15 look at verse 1 moreover brother talk to Christians I declare unto you the gospel which I have preached unto you, which also ye have received, amen, and wherein ye stand. So you have a stand, and Jesus Christ is the rock, and you know, people throw different things at you, and you come back to scripture, and you're to be able to explain what it is you're standing on. You're standing on the side of the rock, here's the promises of God, and this is me, and this is why I'm saved, and this is how I know. These things have I written unto them, to believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. A lot of Christians are out there that are saved. They don't really understand that. They're not really sure that they are saved. They might have been saved or whatever. And then going back to that, well, if he started smoking them truths again, them Paul Malls, they still make Paul Malls, Paul Malls, uh, the new fort, that guy was never saved. Verse 2. By which also you're saved if you keep in memory the things which I have preached, unless you have believed in vain. So there's that. I, I will tell you that. Okay, I believe that. I believe that, that you might not be saved. There's a possibility you might not be saved. You might think you are, but you ain't saved. Because there are some here, according to Paul, unless you believe in vain. He's yeah. talking about what it is to get saved, and then he goes on to explain what the gospel is. But there are people that have right. said, I did that. Yeah. And you no more did that than Hogan's ghost, man. You had it up here. You had the knowledge you got it here. You never got right. You right. never got saved, right? You weren't in it. And that can happen. But to say everybody that doesn't do right, that made a profession of faith, ain't doing right, and never got saved, that ain't right. Because demons have forsaken for this present world. Amen? Right. So you get that all the time. And, and this, I will tell you, you like this. Make it simple. How about you? You all 100% all. Oh, it's 100, dog. You, you all 100 all the time? No, you're not. Because you got Mondays too now. <laughs> yeah, you got an alarm clock. Uh -huh. You go off at 530. You all are hopping up, you seeing Amazing Grace at 5 in the morning, man? Because yeah. I don't. Man, maybe I just ever yeah, got saved myself. Maybe I was that guy. Maybe it is me. Uh, but bless God, there are Mondays, man. There are times. I used to learn of these guys at work. They would be these charismatic guys because they're told that if you don't produce this fruit, if this ain't you and you ain't singing all the time, then, oh, you probably ain't, you ain't saved because you don't act like me. And so I would talk to these guys at work, and it would be like, we can never have just a normal conversation. You know, there's a preaching voice. Let's go and That's that. And for this, and maybe out on the street, but if I'm just sitting there next to you and we're drinking coffee, brother, you don't need to scream in my face, man. There ain't nobody here. I ain't a mile away, but it's got him right here. And he would get all hot and bother. And then the Bible, and then the Bible, and then the Bible said, and then, and then and, and, and he would realize that, that I'm not buying what he's selling, and he would stop. And he would look crazy, too. He would, and he would go, you ain't hearing me, huh? So is everybody else, by the way. But they have this deal now. What happens is they, they get they get turned into this. Well, if 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 it's that if I can't show that I'm saved, then they're gonna doubt and oh my gosh, so now you put on the show. Right. I get the show. I don't need the show, man. I don't need you to put on a show either, by the way. So if you're here, press press God that you're here, glory to God, man. Tell him to take the trash out and get home. Amen. Do that. We gotta get out early and do all that stuff. Be here for the right reason, man. Right. Don't move for nothing. Okay, thank you. That's for you, dog. And 
And I think for them deals right there, I'm gonna eat some of them. That right there, we got donuts and all that carbs and sugar, man. God be sugar. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all that stuff. Don't eat sugar, don't eat sugar. But whatever you're gonna do, man, you stop playing. Let's just put it like this, and maybe we should title it Stop Playing. Stop playing, man. Uh, work for the night is coming. Yeah. You sing a song about that. Work for the night is coming, right? Is that a song? Yeah. It says, uh, work for the night is coming. Work through the morning hours. Work while the dew is sparkling. Work mid-spring flowers. Work when the day grows brighter. Work in the glowing sun. Work for the night is coming when man's work is done. Amen. You have an opportunity now. I, most of you, if not all of you, walked in here, correct? That changed. You have, you're cognizant, right? You can listen. You have been listening. I'm hearing you say some amens and whatever. So, you know, you might be daydreaming at the moment. You know, you're about to wait for the guy to come rolling in here. going to steal the offering. You're going to trip him and stay the day. I know. I, I've done that. I do that at the mall, like a Walmart. Like, all right, go ahead, man. One of these guys going to try to steal a bicycle. He's going to come running out. I'm going to drop, kick him off the bike or whatever. But I, he'll probably be like, all right, man. Here's the way out. I'm not sure what I want to lose my life over, and I'm thinking sad. But you got this weird deal, man, that if you're just not whatever, and that happens, and you can, and you can go down in the valley sometimes. But whatever it need, whatever you need to do, brother, maybe sister or whatever, it, it, maybe you got to just repent, man. Maybe you just got to get some stuff right. Maybe you need an adjustment. Paul says, uh, 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 examine yourself. And you need to. And that's what, why it's important to be in church. Because I do. I need it all the time. I need to be around Christians. And I enjoy it. I didn't always enjoy it. I'll tell you when I didn't enjoy it, though. I was saved just like you were saved. But when I'm not doing right, you don't, you don't, I don't want to be around you. And no disrespect to you. It's just that because I know what you want to say. You want to bring up stuff that I know I should be doing or whatever. And thank God, them days, man, are kind of for the most part behind me now. And, you know, for the most part. You know, so, no, you got to get it right. I know winter's coming, do you? Yeah. I know Jesus Christ is coming, do you? Yep. And you know that leading up to Jesus Christ, when Paul tells you stuff like, uh, you know, let not your heart be troubled and stuff, and then and, and he'll lead you up into uh, verse 3, uh, as if they're coming, falling away first. And you're in the midst of that now. And what you're going to find is you're going to find at the judgment seat of Christ, you won't suffer loss. And it won't be, won't be because I didn't try to warn you, try to help you out. And thank God, man, we can come to a Bible-believing church and we can get a little loud about doing right. We can get a little motivation, hopefully, to try to get you to take that next step and, and, and wake up, man, and make sure you're understanding that one of these days you're going to step out of this reality you call life. One of these days you're going to step out of that body and then all the little excuses that you got going on now so that you can't take that next step for Jesus Christ, he did for you. He never quit. He could have come down. He never came down. He didn't come down. The song, remember that song? And he didn't come down. He didn't come down. But yeah, here we are, Victory Baptist Church, and you got people, man, they quit, they stopped, they whatever. And I, I remember uh, pastoring up in Hialeah. I had sadly a guy tell me and his wife, well, we're taking a vacation. I'm like, oh, great, man, where are you going, Bahamas? He said, no, I'm from church. I said, all right, that ain't a Bible. I'll tell you. You want to talk Bible? You want to come talk to me? You want me to give you some pastoral counseling? Bring your Bible. Amen. I know what you do. You, you're not going to have to write. You're going to keep asking all the wrong people. You know who to ask. You know who to go to. It's like kids. You know when to ask mom or when to ask dad about certain. I know how that works. I got it. You know, I just have my mother. You got to go where I sneak out the window. But anyway, it was those days. all over. I, I repented. Sorry. <laughs> Paul says, do thy diligence to come before for when look at Ruth chapter two. Ruth chapter two. Now, if you want to read a good book, this is Ruth. This is this is that Gentile bride. That's uh, Boaz. That's the Jewish king. That's your marriage. That's this is this relationship here that you should, as a Christian, work. Whatever you're gonna do, look, listen to me. Do it. Maybe tonight's the night. Maybe you say, okay, let's do it now. Okay, great, do it now. Can you do anything about yesterday? Nope. Not at all, man. If you are in today, and maybe you can pray about tomorrow. I'll give you that. Let's prepare for tomorrow. But whatever you're doing, you're here right now. I can't help you with what happened yesterday. I can't. It's, it, you can't either. Matter of fact, that Bible says forgetting those things which are behind. And that's this psychology deal like, so the last time I had a drink was 20 years ago, but I'm still an alcoholic. Hello, I'm rich. I'm an alcoholic. I had that need. No, I'm not an alcoholic. You 
you're not God. You're not God if you drink it last night or you hit it or you about to hit it. I'll give you that. But all that stuff, that's the world always bringing up the past and bringing this. And he did this. You remember when you did that and there's something trapped inside of you and you got to sit on a couch. And you remember when you were a little kid and your mom threw all the army men away? Right? Remember? And then you kicked the guy's cat. Remember that? No, yeah, I did that. But that was me when I did things as a child. Now, I grew up, you know, I, I'm a new creature in Christ. Amen. That's Second Corinthians chapter 2. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. I'm good. I don't, I don't want you to look back. I don't care what the other pastor did. I don't care the way things used to be at Victory Baptist Church. I know about tonight. And there you are. Either here or not. I know that you drank some coffee and ate dinner. Squirrel, go to God for it, man. It's good stuff. And I, I know what we got planned coming up in the next few days. Why don't you focus on that? Well, whatever you're going to do, you better do it. Because you don't have it. You probably said, boast not thyself, but tomorrow. I don't can't promise you that we'll all be here on Saturday. We probably will. I say you about a 99% chance of everybody that, that can be here if you're not working. You'll be here. And you'll be alive anyway. You may not show up at, at the side of that street there, across the street from that, that, that Cuban. That'd be cool. We should go at a church. We'll do that, Doc. We'll, I'll sit down and we'll plan it. We'll go, go preach. We'll go preach and then we'll all just walk across the street and go eat there. Sit all right down, man. Right, track it all, and then we'll get some of it flowing and all the rest of that stuff. All right, Ruth chapter two, look at verse eleven. And Boaz answered and said unto her, It has, it, it hath fully been showed me. Uh, and know that when you hear and you apply that as Pastor Jesus Christ and, and, and Ruth being the type of the church, know that whatever it is you do, whatever it is you've done, whatever it is you will do, Boaz saw that. That's what it says right there. It says, it has fully been shown to me. I, I see it. God sees it all. Now, I might not see it because in about half an hour, I'll be gone. You go your separate way or we all go our separate ways. And then I don't see you. And you don't see me. But God is. Don't always remember that. That's uh, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3. The eyes of the Lord in every place behold an evil good. But God sure. ain't doesn't move like that. He's like that. Yep. No, I leave. Put up my bag, say goodbye, grab a couple to go donuts, right? Donuts to go or whatever that is. Maybe hit a little coffee on the way and then ride around and do my thing, whatever. But gosh. So Paul said, hey, I figured it out. I've already been to the third heaven. I know it. Let me write this down for you in 2020. Uh, you need to get busy. Whatever it is you're going to do, I already know this Antichrist is coming. And he says, uh, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the gathering together of him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, nor, uh, uh, as from us, as that day of Christ is at hand. So here you got here this root there, and you're living in these last days, and Boaz answered and said unto her, it hath fully been showed me. All that thou hast done unto thy mother, in law since the death of her of thine husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother, and in the land of thy nativity, and are come unto a people which thou knewest not heretofore. Here See all that little family deal? That's all that family, what she went through. God knows about your family so too, by the way. That was just sad. Well, I said, I, I know about that. It's been shown me. I know what happened there. I know who said what. I know who this you. I know why. You know, I, I, I saw the whole thing go down. So there's your version, and then there's their version, and then there's the truth, right? So in the well, God's the truth. God saw exactly. you can you can you can go to that and text everybody with your version of it, and then the other person is going to talk and text with their version of it, and then you have God again staring at you. You ain't going nowhere. He said, "I feel heaven and earth." So where exactly do you do your business where He did, that is in heaven already? There is nowhere to go other than that. You were here. And then, then the best case scenario would be, okay, I'll surrender. Amen. You live life better. I, I'm here to tell you. I've been there. I've been safe. Like we say, oh, we got, we got 31 years or whatever. They ain't all been Friday night, party, good time. Everything's great. For better or for worse. But you got the Holy Spirit of God. You got Jesus Christ, man. And it's going to help that marriage. He's helped our marriage. He's made, helped us make rather right, let's go like this. He's helped maintain the marriage. We're in this together. So we, my wife and I, we are, we respect each other. Yeah. 
thank God for it. Thank God I got a good lady, young lady like that, man, that, that supports me. Not only supports me, but is able to tolerate and put up. Not that I have a lot of I'm the only one that does yep. that. Yep. Anyway, it's all good. Thank God for the blessing. <laughs> it hath fully been seen, show me all that thou hast done. Verse 12. The Lord recompensed thy work. Man, I, I, I promise you, it's not only that you look good when you do good. Because that's cool. You put that on t-shirt. You look good when you do good. <laughs> yeah, you look good to me. Right? You know, so what, 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 I don't care about all that, man. I, I, when you're doing good, you're beautiful. When you're doing the right thing for the right reason, man, you just make sense. You click. When you ain't doing right, y'all, I don't care what you look like, man. I don't care what you think. You might be that legend in your own mind, right? Because I know people, of course, you know, people are people. But you don't do nothing for me. I, I love my kids. I honestly do. I pray for them. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't pray for you. But they're off. I know mom, she taught, you know, and they're off. And I pray that they get on. Man, I love my kids. I love my daughter. I love my, all my kids. I love them. But I have very little in common at this point with them. When my boy comments about his car being flooded out, I know why it's flooded out. Because he's safe. And you keep playing that game, man, and you hear about this do thy diligence, man, to come before winter, and you just blow off yet one more sermon on why it's important to get things right. You don't know why I'm preaching why I'm preaching. I'm just preaching. I don't have an agenda other than to rip your face off, but, you know, that's normal, I think. I don't have a problem doing it. Because I know the urgency. I can get in this book like you shouldn't get in this book. And I can read that, wow, these things are about to change, man. You know, nine months ago, you were doing everything. You would never have guessed this was going to be. And we keep things in perspective. We still got AC going on. We're still meeting. Glory to God for it. But your America changed, man. So the plans of you being like this gung ho Bible believer and winning souls, whatever, people aren't wanting to take tracks from your hand anymore because they've been conditioned, man. You got cuties and all the rest of that stuff. And you've got churches all over America, man, that are being shut down and whatever. And then sadly, instead of Christians getting stuff right, because God sees it, you can go kid your grandmother about how things are and he hates me and he's always out whatever. God shuts your deal down, man. It's like Christian says, well, we sound like a lie about it now. They ain't in church. Well, I ain't like a lie about it because now you got this corona deal and God's in charge of all that, man. God said, all right, you don't want to go to church? I'll shut your church down. And sadly, you get Christians, man, that are actually relieved because now they don't have to keep coming up with lies and excuses why they can't get done. I don't know. Paul calls it reasonable service. I'm not sure why you think church is so difficult. It's just hanging out, and you get fed. So, okay, go that route. You want to be carnal about it? We'll feed you. And every meal that I've had has been good. That's a bonus. That's a bonus. Man, his family, man, I can come in there and give me a big old box of cereal. And that fills my soul, man. That little stuff, I, you know, I love that. I love, I, well, I love being saved. I love being saved. Amen. Amen. I love, I'm looking forward to the day that Jesus Christ comes back and I can actually see him. But I don't want to see him in, as a disappointment. Amen. Amen. That's right. Huh? And unfortunately, because you decide you're going to live your life the way you want it, and you have two different lives going on. And if we can pick up on it, I can pick up on it. Because I, I've been it. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> you can't, you know. But I know that God's God of grace and mercy and understanding and, and righteousness and wants nothing but good stuff for you. In this life here, in this life here, Amen. He wants it. But whatever you're going to do, whatever you do, what you got to do, man. Whatever yourself, if, you, if you're doing something and it ain't right, quit it. Yourself, man. Whatever you got to do, do it. Whatever you're scheming, whatever you've got going on, whatever double life you're living, whatever plans you think you got going, God Almighty sees it all. He's watching it right now. He knows your the thoughts and the intents of your heart right now. And here I am preaching a message to kind of get with the program type deal. Yep. Any, I don't frame my, I don't, well, not often, but I don't frame my, well, there was that one. I don't frame my messages after you, man. You're not all that anyway. How about that one? 
Put that on the side. Well, that'd be good. Victory Baptist Church, you ain't all that. Yeah, why not, man? They, they think you hate them anyway. All right, so you're right. I hate you, man. Get out of here. Get out of town. Amen. Man, it's good to be saved, but you got to know it, and you got to just want it, and God Almighty's got so many more things for you in this life right here. And then when you see him, I don't know, it'd be like, job well done. Don't you want it? You want that? Don't you like that? Don't you like when mama tells you, hey, good job, man, or making the cake when it didn't catch on fire or whatever. That's good cake. It tastes good. What do you got for it? it smells like smoking. Is there anything going on? We just scraped the fog and burn fire. You didn't know it. You had it. I knew that cake you were eating. I saw it. I, I, thought, I almost called 911, man, but it tasted good. I, I thought it was. It just like, it doctored up. No, it's fine. Oh, it's just burned the oven. It was the oven. It was beautiful. It was good. Police department was out of house. They were holding down my house and phone. The you oven. I mean? got it, it was good. Plus, we got a little coffee going. <laughs> Shake the roaches out of that machine. They were fantastic. Verse 12, the Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord, God of Israel, under whose wing thou art come to trust. And you see that whole part there, that whole, uh, I don't know, the recompense of thy work, that, that your payday. The recompense. You get what you deserve. That's my one. Yeah, you do get what you deserve. You Now, on top of that, be honest, you're still alive, right? Because you know you should have been dead a while back. Yes, you have. Yes, you should have. God should have killed you. You better thank God if you ain't in the Old Testament. <laughs> now, I would have made it through the Old Testament, but you, <laughs> now, I would have made it out of 12, man. 12 years old, I, they would have, the elders, they would have drugged me, my mama would have dragged off. Oh, it would have been horrible. I would have had the slow death. I mean, I, they would have been throwing, they probably still throwing rocks, man. I, but thank God for that grace of God, amen. And you're in the church age. You God's God of understanding. And God can cleanse you in that precious blood of Jesus Christ. And you can kind of get cleaned up and man dressed up and sit up a little collar, sit up straight, and represent your Savior for a change. Amen. And stop being ashamed. And the only reason why you're ashamed, you haven't bought into the book yet. <laughs> what are we waiting for, man? Oh. Do with thy diligence to come before winter. You better get done what needs to be done. You better get serious with God because one of these days, and you're like, oh, here goes another week. They go quick. I'm on the down inside, right, over the hill. You have been on the roller coaster. When you Before you hit that thing, it's slow, kind of click, click, click. And it's like, wow, oh, man, I wish I was nine. I, wish I, was, I can't wait to go 12 for my home. You know, you're 12, man. You still don't know anything. And, you know, my dad says a man doesn't really grow up until he's about 30 or 40. 41. 41. Okay, well, there you go. So I finally grew up, man. I, I, I'm 12 years old. <laughs> but boy, go ahead and come over that hill. Yep. And that thing, that's life. I don't even look at my days anymore. It's, what, weeks yep. and months. It's already halfway through September. And, man, we were at the blowout about a year ago. You remember how quick that went? I was cool. And then we had Stella telling everybody we're going to hell to eat pop tarts. Remember that?
do a scene in your face, man. It, it, I, I, it actually affects me when you don't show. My dad, I got, can't come, and I get the schedule part, but that does. Now, if that does me that way, now I'm your pastor. Now I need to, I gotta go. I'm a, how do you think that, that, that affects your safety? Now, I didn't love you enough to die for you. Now, if you're down there, you're like, Barnett, you take a bullet from me, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, where's that? Well, before we get in all that, you you got to show me a little bit more Bible than than that. That is my responsibility as a shepherd. Go out there, and they got black lives guys out there with a brick. We send the kids out for it. That's how that works. Amen. Abe, go out there and check it out, boy. Take this pen with you, dog. We love you. Let's pray. Hold hands, light a candle. The Lord recompense thy work, man. That day's coming. Now, all that hard work, all that dedication, whatever you can do, I'm telling you, man, do it. Because there's verses like that. God pepper all this kind of stuff so that if you're actually reading your Bible, you're like, oh, it's tough. It's all oh, it's hard. Oh, I get recompensed. The Lord said, yeah, for me. You want the bonus at the end of the year. I work for G4S, man. Yeah, I know. They, 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 they pay well, but their bonuses work. I know how much money they make. That's all that part of it. That's right. Yeah, I take a little bit. God said, I'm going to recompense you. I see exactly what you're doing tonight. I know what you're doing. I know what you've been doing. I see what's going on. Now, when that recompense there, that means kind of like, you know, you get what you deserve now. Full reward. If there's a, if there's, right, you, you want that full reward. But like you sad because Christians keep playing the game. You keep thinking like somehow, like Esau, that the, the thing is here. It ain't here. It isn't here. I don't care how political, it's not here. I promise you, it's not here. Amen. And you keep playing and wasting time and doing all this stuff, and God's like, man, you know what? You're getting me sick with gratitude. Yep. Just like any kid, any family, if you got a mom and dad and you're just being rebellious or whatever, you know, your parents get sick and tired of your foolishness, by the way. That ain't nothing new. They were sick and tired of mine, and I got it with the belt, and I got it whatever. I deserved it. I deserved it. I deserved my dad knocking me out. Because of what I got involved in. I did that. That's me. I did it. I didn't blame it on him. I blame it. It's not his fault. Now, the time you come up on, you're doing what you're doing because you want to do what you do. I'm here to tell you, to try to help you, that one of these days, you get what you deserve. Trying to, trying to ease you back into the mainstream of doing right. The mainstream of what God can do and try to help you and sprinkle a little grace. You need grace to get through this time, man. Why? All sorts of things out there the devil's got waiting for you. I, I can help you be happy. You don't need to be happy in a Baptist church. You can be happy out there on the street. You're a fool, man. And I know this about that. Sin is good for a season. All that kiki and the music and this and the two whatever and whatever and you're just kind of playing them games with God. They don't last for a second. At the moment you think it's funny and ha ha and I can't wait. Go ahead. That don't last, man. I ain't going anywhere. I know that these people get involved in certain things, man, and we just keep preaching and waiting. And then here it comes. Come full back around. Hey, boss, can I talk to you? Yeah. I'm right here, man. For that one. You'd much rather hear it at this level. As hard as it might sound to you, like, oh, man, this guy's just, like, kidding us with full barrels or whatever, this ain't nothing. This ain't nothing. If you're nervous here, man, you, you don't want to see God. Amen. You don't want to run into God in the dark alley, man. You don't want God to, you let me shoot, let me try to shake you up. Let me try to get your attention. You let God, God's got a wrench for every nut, and every nut here, man. He got something for you. You think you got it all covered. You think you walk in circumspect. You think you got a 360. You think you're around. You see everything. You don't see what God sees. He got a different perspective than you do. He'll come and hit you, man. I mean, them boxers, the real good boxers, man, hit you in these odd kind of angles or whatever, this MMA stuff. You know, I remember I'm going to take my right foot, and that's Billy Jack. I don't know if you guys ever seen that. Amen. And I'm going to take my right foot and put it on the left yeah. side of your face, and you ain't going to do you know, nothing you can do about it. And the guy's like, what up? And then he's like, Lord said, I'm going to take my right foot and put it on the left side of your face, man, and you ain't going to do nothing about it. And now you can say, yes, sir, no, sir, no, excuse me, or you can't have them And I'm trying to help you, man. Your day's coming. Whatever you got to do, brother, sister, whatever you got to do to get it right, get it right. If you ain't right tonight, get it right. 
Yeah. That day is coming. You gotta love your God. You got a great God. Yes, you got a great God that knows everything about you and, and hasn't kicked you out of the family. Yeah, that's right. You can't steal out with every family because you can mess up things, you burn bridges or whatever else, and you're not invited to Christmas dinner. <laughs> but God, you got you got you still got you still you still good with that. Verse 13, then, then, then she said, that's a great prayer. I'm going to read it. Yeah. In verse 13, you see what I'm seeing there. Yeah. When he just told her about the recompense, about the, the, what she could have, what the blessings, she says then instead of taking things for granted, her prayer is, let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord. For thou hast comforted me, for thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaid. You glad that Jesus Christ is gentle with you, man? Yes. Mm-hmm. Knowing what he can do, that's the same Jesus Christ that flooded out the entire planet. Mm-hmm. Babies were crying, moms were crying, oh my God, oh my God, help me, help me. Those folks, you drown, you die, and you're dead in there. Mm-hmm. That's that guy. Yep. But he's gentle with you, ain't he? Mm-hmm. Sure is. Putting up with all that foolishness that you do. All that secret stuff you think you got going on, you got none going on. Nope. She says, let me find favor in that sight, my Lord. That should be your prayer every day. Every day you wake up, Lord, yeah. Let me find favor in your sight. There you go. Five, I'm prone to wander. I'm prone to do things that don't please you. I'm prone to get involved in things that break people's hearts. Christians, he who had never been saved. You, you, you can't be saved and do that. Oh, you were just quiet. No, it's not. Christians can be some of the nastiest, meanest people on God's green earth. And you're as saved as anybody else who's ever been saved. You trusted Christ. And your heart was right enough on that day, however, you allowed the elements and the cares and the affairs of this life to get caught up. And now you've entangled yourself with all this wickedness going on, and you don't look like you were enjoying your salvation any longer. Because you stop, you stop praying like she prayed in verse 13. And that's not for say a prayer, but that could be a prayer for you. Applicable to you. But you're learning an admonition reading this. Let me find favor in that sight. You keep that going every day. You be a shoot, you straight shooter, man. Every day, mean it. Lord, yep. Help me find favor in oh, whatever you see me. Going to the left a little bit, going to the right. You just give me a little nudge or whatever. I'm back on track, Lord, because I want to do right. Amen. You do it. God will leave. I'm great, man, because that's typically not what I hear from Christians. I usually got to go find them and do whatever. Adam was out. Who knows where Adam was at? Who knows where you at? You hide yourself, tending, playing church, doing whatever. God's like, yeah, where you at? Where are you, Adam? Oh, oh, we're right here. Oh, well, why? Well, here comes the excuse. Well, I don't understand. Well, why'd you have to do it like that? Well, if you were God like that in heaven, how'd you allow this circumstance to happen in my life? Well, well, the devil did it. You did it. The woman you gave me did it. Because you do that all the time. Shame being that body shows. And whatever you're going to do, whatever you got going on, whatever plans you think you're about to embark on, whatever whatever venture you've got planned, God will, God, will, God will change that man, sister, brother, whoever you are right here. I know you yeah, are. You were out here. Glory to God, man. But whatever you got going on here, whatever you got scheming over here, whatever plans you got over here, got in it? I don't know, is it? You can pretend like it's not a factor, right? Aren't you aren't you bought with Christ? Yeah. That means you're not your own. Right. You get in a, somebody else's car, start driving around town, they don't call police. Yep. It's called stealing. When we say that at work, when we you know, we see these guys, man, they ain't doing nothing, and look, they're stealing again. Case managers are stealing again, man. They're just leaving early their salary, they're stealing again. My guy. Lamont Daniels has got his door quit. He hated that. All his guys are hourly. 
So these guys had to stay, man, and they had to do it while these salary employees, you know, they'd be going all I had to remind them that, brother, it ain't the same group. It ain't your operations guys, brother. They got to sit up, stop focusing on these guys. Make sure there ain't no holes in the fence. Go that route. Go, go send them out. Make sure there ain't no holes in the, in the bottle wire. Don't worry about that. Look, they're stealing. They were stealing. I didn't know. Stop stealing. Christian, you got a God Almighty that's going to see you one day. Judge him, Jesus Christ. Sure and he wants to give you every reward that's due to you, man. You're expected in. That's Jeremiah 29. He wants to give you an expected in. Who do you think he expected? After he went through everything he went through to save you, you think he wants you to end like a loser? You think Jesus Christ took it in the face so that you could be a loser? He did that so you could be a winner. So you can win, man. You got gold, silver, precious stones, man. You got an inheritance, uncorruptible, that you might get a full reward. That's Bible. That's why we preach. That's why I encourage you. Hey, man, repent. Be zealous, therefore, repent. Because the time's at hand. Winter's coming. Do that diligence. Whatever you're going to do for Jesus Christ, man, get on the front line. Get in the ditch with us, man. Get in the trench. Come on, man. Repent. Why? Your day's coming. Your day's coming. And I want it to be like you're excited, man. And yep. the cavalry comes, and you're like them settlers, man. The Indians are circling the wagons, and it looks like, man, we only got a few of us left. Let's go. The other ones, all, you know, they headed out the night. We woke up, man. And half our company's gone. Where'd they all go? They went for the hills, man. And they missed out on the blessing because the Lord Jesus Christ comes just in time. And he come call you up out of here, man. And you're going to be raptured. Don't you want to be raptured in the midst of the will of God? And you're heading past the cloud in the clouds. And you dance. I don't know what you do in the cloud. You're dancing in the cloud. I don't know. They dance in the Old Testament, right? David and them dance. Maybe, yep. maybe that's the place to dance, man. You know, yep. do the hustle. And you're up in the clouds and doing your thing, and Jesus Christ is like, all right, man, let's go, fellow, let's go round them up. And then on the way up there, you realize, oh, hold on, we had a Bible study about this. I think we go to the judgment seat of Christ now. And then you're like, <laughs> and he's throwing up and all this vomit everywhere, man. Oh, I'm getting out of here like nervous, right? Yeah. You've never been like that? Again, it's me. Now, I remember them nights, man, when, when we had to have them inspections. I'm the QA guy. Now I'm thinking, oh, man, I got five kids. Oh, God. <laughs> Throwing up in the morning. I'm like, you tell him up. You don't have to ask about that. <laughs> so I'm just saying, man. I'm like, look, man, I'm saying, what's wrong? I'm good. <laughs> good. Got to go put the keys out and take some scope or whatever, man. I'm just face on. Hey, I'm so happy you're here. <laughs> <laughs> My stomach's like, oh, you want to eat something? No, but when it's over, and you pass, you get the report, man. And you got a, you got a superior there. And you got, a, you got the top of the whatever, man. And now you see everybody. You see where this report's going. You see where this review's going. And man, you're like, oh my God, they, they, you know, thank you. They didn't find something. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for again for your, for your son and everything that you blessed us with, Lord, and more than we know. And Lord, it's oftentimes, Father, we just take things for granted. We come here, sermon after sermon, service after service, and nothing changes, Lord. We just have this idea that going through these kind of ruts or these stale, stale, uh, the stale living of ours, 
put out the joy and the comfort that you've you promised us, Lord, all the all the things that you can bless us, all the grace that you have for us. Lord, I pray you, you deal with the hearts of your young people here. God, help me. Help my unbelief. Lord, help me be a better pastor, better husband, better father. Help me be a better Christian, better witness, better testimony for you. God, uh, you're so gracious and merciful on us. Lord, I know I don't deserve anything that I got. I definitely don't deserve my salvation, and I do not deserve the ministry. But yet you feel fit, and here we are. God, help us, I pray. Give a, give a, a bit of encouragement. Break off a little grace for these people. And help them out, Lord, please, I pray. For it's eternally too late. One of these days, I know it's all coming to an end. I know winter's coming. So we plead the blood, Lord. We pray that you come soon, of course. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 There you go. Good to see you, Good to see you. Good to see you.